Okay, moving forward with the discussion items. Draft policy 325 copyright law. I'm going to ask Superintendent Gales. <coughs> That's the background on that, please. I'll just get it up here. Um, thank you. Um, as trustees are aware, <coughs> several school boards um, took exception to the uh, access copyright rates and the process that was uh, being imposed on school boards and brought this to uh, the, the Supreme Court. And as a result, the Supreme Court ruled in, in favor and, <coughs> and believed that the uh, rates were not, and I'll use the term, fair dealing. Um, and so they have directed the rate to be decreased <coughs> from $5.16 per student to $0.35 cents per student and apply some retroactivity to that. So we are expecting uh, to save annually about $140,000 a year because of this decision, plus some retroactivity, but we don't know exactly how far back that is going to uh, go to be applied. Comments, questions? <clears throat> um, there are some certain criteria that we must satisfy in terms of um, satisfying uh, the access um, copyright issues and that is a board policy and procedures and the uh, board the policy has been attached and so we did ask that to be um, approved by the board. I know just doing some reading on this earlier today there's a difference between the Fairdale which is the Canadian version and fair usage, which is an American version, which is a much wide open copyright um, <coughs> discussion, I think. And with this, as you said, becomes some restrictions for teachers and others that are using us in education. Um, how, how do we eventually get those restrictions down to the classroom level so teachers are aware of what they can and cannot use? Uh, at each photocopier, we will be posting those issues next to the photocopier in a to allow uh, teachers to see what the what the rules are around that photocopying, and we will be bringing it to the principals. Mr. Buckman, you have a question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to comment that our Trustees Association has put a strong effort into uh, making these changes, and uh, it certainly is, uh, has paid off. Any further questions, discussions? Okay, so we have a motion that the Committee of the Whole recommend the Upper Canada District School Board approve Policy 325 Copyright Law. Do I have a mover? Moved by Trustee McRae, seconded by Trustee Buckland. And I'll ask you to take your vote. Do you mind double checking? Greg? And uh, Trustee Garrell? Yeah, I voted. Okay. Trustee Petersma? Yeah, I'm in favor. Thank you. And that carries. The next item is the North Grenville District High School track, and I'm going to ask uh, <coughs> uh, Chief Information Facility Officer Jeremy Hobbs tell us about this one, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you have my rather uh, wordy report here, so hopefully you've been able to sort through the, some of the numbers in there. Um, it's just kind of interesting. It's been about almost five years to the day that I first sat here actually on the facilities job for about a month, and uh, my first report to board was that the Russell High School project was going to be almost double the approved budget, and the Van Cleek Hill project, which hadn't started yet, was on track um, and going the same way. So. It's actually kind of a nice problem to have uh, five years later to talk about a project that's on time and actually on <coughs> budget and figuring out um, what we can do with uh, that money. Um, just to recap some of the facts, because I recognize that a number of the trustees, including yourself, were not around the table at that time. Um, but in 2009, the Ministry of Education uh, announced funding um, for the North Grenville project replacement of the school for $17.368 million. Um, and that amount uh, was intended to include every single aspect of the project. So um, if there was land to be purchased, which there was not in this case, it would have to come out of that um, architect's fees, furniture and equipment, any computers, um, the actual construction of the school and all the facilities associated with the school were required to come out of that. 
uh, about a year later, after uh, a year of planning in the design uh, with uh, architects, um, PBK, Genovar, um, we presented to board a request for approval to tender. Um, the total um, estimate that we had, the best estimate that we had for that uh, at the time was around $17.2 million, so we were estimating that we would be slightly under budget. Um, at the time, for those of you who are around the table, you may recall that um, it's our practice and standard practice in construction to carry uh, contingency reserves oftentimes amounting to 10% of the overall uh, project budget. So at that time, we were carrying around seven hundred fifty dollars to $800,000 in contingency reserves um, for the, the construction of the project. Um, and we, at that time, we had also just closed out the Van Cleek Hill project where um, our team, uh, Peter Bosch and Steve Holmes, uh, did an exceptional job of not dipping into the contingency fund. So at that time, uh, we had a little chat around uh, the table uh, about the risk that if we didn't spend all those funds, the ministry could potentially tap us on the shoulder and say, you know, at the end of the project, we want that back. So um, moving on, uh, one of the challenges for us at that point was even before we started the project is to start talking to the ministry about um, if we have money left over, if we have unspent contingency reserves, um, can we still keep it? And uh, basically their stance on it uh, and the stance of our ministry advisor who was appointed to us uh, at the outset was that if we could come up with some pre-approved projects, um, then they would be willing to entertain those projects. Um, <clears throat> the challenge for us is that when you're at the start of a project, you really have no idea how much money you're going to have at the end of it. Um, so whatever projects we had to choose, we had to leave ourselves in a position where if we ran out of money, we could not do them. We couldn't commit to them too early in the project. Um, and ideally what we wanted to do is we wanted to have projects where uh, if I, I could do part of one of the projects if I really wanted to, depending on the amount of money you have. So it was really a challenge of picking things that were going to um, uh, allow us the most possible flexibility. So based on the recommendations of the steering committee, uh, we came up with three supplemental projects um, and the ministry and our advisor sort of uh, conditionally uh, approved us to go ahead with them. Uh, the first one of those uh, was what we call air conditioning reinstatement. And basically, in the course of designing the project, uh, we would design a little bit and then hand off the designs to a third party cost estimator. And they would come back and tell us, nope, you're over budget. So then we would walk away and take things out of the project until they agreed that it was within budget. And we went through a series of iterations. And one of the things we took out uh, was air conditioning to a substantial amount of the school. So uh, one of the things, obviously, that when we uh, decided, hey, what would we do with this money if we had some left over, uh, our intention was to reinstate that and basically put it back in. Um, the second piece uh, that emerged over the course of the summer as we were building, uh, started to build the school is that the, the residents along the west property line, uh, who have homes on the west property line, started to express some concerns about their backyards uh, backing onto the actual school property in close proximity to the school and they felt some concern that um, kids would be walking through their backyards to get to school from Merrick Trail and requested that we build some fencing. So uh, at that time we agreed that we would put some fencing in and also uh, put some speed bumps in and things to control the speed of cars along that long stretch of driveway. And then the third piece of it, uh, which frankly at the time seemed to be a rather unlikely uh, prospect, was we thought if we have something left over after that, could we start to set the stage for um, putting in a sports field? And the rationale for the sports field was very simple. It was uh, that um, I could, in contrast to doing something like an, an extra room on the school, you would have to commit to doing that at the start of the actual project. Whereas a track, you could, in theory, in a field, you could wait until the end of the project to see how much money you have left. Um, we could do things like clear the trees and just prepare a very basic field or you could go as far as you could based on the available funds. So it really was the option that really represented the um, most flexible way to use funds de depending on how much we had at the end of the project. So um, very shortly after we presented uh, to, to um, Committee of the Whole in June 2010, um, we were anticipating that uh, construction costs were really high at the time. We were really nervous about the tender. Uh, we only had two competitors on the, on the tender. But the tender closed and it was $750,000 under our, our previous estimate. So um, basically all told, starting at the start of construction, uh, we were about a million and a half to $1.8 million uh, under budget. Um, so moving on from there, uh, we basically made the decision immediately to reinstate the air conditioning in the school. 
Um, we set aside some of that, that those funds for the fencing work as well. And then we proceeded to set about the construction just to see what we would have left, left over. Because it is fairly atypical for us to be in a situation where we don't use any of the contingency reserves in a project. Um, fair, tru truly enough, through the course of the project, we used uh, about $300,000 of the contingency reserves. And those were um, for things, everything from you know, deciding we wanted to move a receptacle to um, having a little situation where the school was a few inches uh, out of place from where it was supposed to be on the plans and having to de deal with a few issues like that. But basically what we ended up with uh, over the course of the last um, uh, few months is that uh, about a million dollars uh, under budget left over to allocate towards uh, the supplemental project number three, which would be the track. Uh, we divided that into two projects, which we undertook separately from the main construction project, so we would not have to incur change orders uh, as part of the main construction project. Um, <coughs> phase one was the grubbing and clearing of the space where the track would go, and also fencing the entire uh, school property, which is its own story. And um, that that body of work was around uh, two hundred thousand dollars, and uh, so that leaves us in and around a million dollars left. And the challenge with actually pinning these numbers down is that. We're still in the process of working through deficiencies from the main construction process, so bills are still rolling in. So it's very hard to tell the exact, exact number that we have left over. So basically what we have is around a million dollars to finish off or to do what we can do um, for the track and field project. And the rest of that work is um, set up for spring of 2013. <coughs> and um, that's where we stand. Much. Openness to comments and questions. Trustee Swan. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate the steering committee. I was only on it a short time, but I saw how hard they worked in order to make this come under budget and to make this track and the air conditioning uh, a reality. And I think you all deserve a pat on the back for this. And I think this is a really exciting opportunity for the board and uh, the community of North Grenville to have such a A1 facility. A school including a field or track. No more comments? Peter? Oh, Peter? Peter? Uh, Trustee Garrow? Yeah, uh, just uh, through you, Chair. I thought that uh, that was a great uh, explanation, and being a former athletic supporter, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Trustee Buckland. Th thanks, Mr. Chairman. Now, I, a question, first of all, through you. Uh, does the, uh, the Catholic school in St. Michael's, does it uh, have a track? Yes, it does. Pardon? They have a track? Okay. Uh, well, it would seem to me that if we had a million dollars, I could, uh, I'd much prefer to move to uh, the academic side and perhaps, uh, I think I could build two more shops. For the, for the young bucks, and um, it, it always struck me that, that this school was uh, somewhat uh, sparse in the uh, the shop uh, delivery. So uh, I don't know where the, the point came that it, it, we must uh, have a track or nothing. I I get the idea of it. It's perhaps easier to work on the track having put up the building. But was there no consideration to looking at? Uh, some increased shops, which uh, would be more of an invitation to uh, to elementary school students to come to to our high school. Um, when you actually design a school nowadays, it's a little bit different than uh, it used to be. The ministry actually, <coughs> uh, at the start of the process, requires you to fill out what they call a space template, and and basically what it does is uh, your school is initially designed for a fixed number of pupil places. The ministry, out of that, through a formula, generates a number of square feet. And then what it does is it actually it actually creates what they would consider to be a typical configuration for a school of that size. So um, the school that we built has an auto shop and a wood shop, and it has an art room and a music room and a variety of other 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 spaces. And in fact, the space template, um, and you can argue with whether it's right or whether it's wrong. The space template um, actually. Um, indicates that it's only typical to have one shop in a school of that square footage these days. So um, recognizing that this is coming from a sort of Toronto-centric mentality where you might have 1,500 kids in a typical typical high school. Um, but um, the shops are um, 
equal to what they had and um, more than what the ministry uh, would typically allocate. So there was a little bit of a battle on our part to convince the Ministry of Education when they were going through the approval process. They actually approve our design uh, that um, we weren't um, over allocating the shops. The, the second challenge that you have is that up until the point of tender, um, we were very close to being over budget on this project. So uh, the challenge that you have at that point is that building actual the con contemplating the addition of additional rooms onto the onto a school is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, you either commit to it early on in the design process, uh, or you sort of have to do it as a later project later on, much later on uh, after the main tender clears. Uh, the challenge that we face with the, a lot of these funding sources and GPTL are good places to learn funding that we had a few years ago was very similar. Uh, the ministry is very tightly sweaters the money very very tightly. Um, they regulate how you spend it, and they also regulate when you're going to spend it. So the challenge for us is uh, a little bit like the Price is Right, is that you really want to spend all of the money you have available without going over. And um, the challenge is that whether you wanted a music room or an art room or a bigger cafetorium or whatever the physical space is, um, in that context, it's almost impossible to be that nimble where I can actually add rooms or take rooms out at the last minute depending on how my tender's gone, right? Because the tender price is actually based on a design that the, the contractor has to submit. So um, it's a bit of a function, to be honest, of the, of the process that the ministry puts you through. Thank you. Further comments, questions? Trustee? Thank you very much. I, I, you know, I'm along with the, uh, the rest of the trustees, very glad that we were able to save some money. However, I have concerns over um, what's being done. My concerns are that this is not one school, one building within a, um, um, a decision-making process. We have well over 50 buildings in our capacity, 100 buildings perhaps. I'm not sure what the total number is. Um, yeah, I guess over 100 elementary and secondary. When we have a school like Russell that was severely over budget, every other school suffered because of that, because we had to allocate more money to offset the cost, the extra cost, the additional cost. We also have communities such as Brockville who will go out and raise money to pay for a track. And here we're going to allow a million dollars to be spent on a track, which be may become the norm whenever we have other schools being built. I also have concern that the ministry, and maybe I need clarification on this, is basically looking at projects that we could spend the money on. I would suspect and think that there's many other projects that we could spend a million on. The one that comes to mind is well, probably about uh, eight years ago we committed to build a school in Cornwall. Uh, we've never had the money to do that. We have several schools that uh, uh, need roof upgrades. We have several schools that need some severe uh, upgrades associated to uh, to the ongoing maintenance. My other concern is that we've got, um, and, and maybe I need clarification on this as well, we don't receive the money until the school is finished. <clears throat> so there's a short-term cash flow situation that we have to go out and borrow money to pay for the ongoing expenses related to building a school. Once the school is finished, we get the money to pay for that. If I'm not mistaken, there is still a cost associated to borrowing money. I'm not sure that the government pays for every last bit uh, that we actually spend to borrow that money. <laughs> At the outset, we have several schools in our, in our jurisdictions that don't have air conditioning. We have one school that was built in Bank Lake Hill um, that doesn't have a track. I'm not sure if it has air conditioning. They're nice to haves, and it's great for that community. But I'm concerned that we would sit back and say, if we save money, we're going to allocate it to one school when the entire school community, the entire board jurisdiction suffers when one goes over. I think those types of decisions need to be outset, at the outset of the project. If we have money that we're going to save, how are we going to allocate it? Where would we like to allocate it? And a million dollars on a track? I think it's great, quality, daily quality phys ed, but I'm not sure that the rest of our board jurisdiction, this district, 
it would be palatable to the understanding that we're going to spend a million dollars on a track. Thank you. Director, you want to address well, that? There was a number of questions. In there. Yes. The first <coughs> one is that we had a committee throughout this that worked, the community-based committee. The reports came back to this board 32 different times, so it's a surprise. I can understand it's a surprise, but there was a great deal of send back to, to us here. I will agree with you that the situation where we find out we're going really, really well, that should come back too. But we had never ever uh, worked from a sort of a paradigm uh, that we would have this. We designed the, the policy to deal with that we would always come back to the board with a potential risk. We didn't see the risk of having too much money for this project. The other piece in working with the ministry, uh, uh, Trust McDonald, is that they have told us that money has to be spent on this particular project and the money has to be spent at a specific time where it goes around. And this is what we've been working with. And I agree with you. Um, for example, if you're directing us now to, to say, if you're working on a project and there's significant savings on it, you want the savings to come back, I think that's more than fair. But that's a different game than we've had before. In fact, I think we were sort of fixed that the money that was sent, the 17-2, that was sent for this project goes to this community, is for this community. And the idea that perhaps we tell the ministry, no, uh, we've saved the money by the board, we'd redistribute as a board, is, is, it, it may be a very, very good way to do this. But that was not in the paradigm at that time. It certainly is now. Trustee McAllister. I understand Trustee McDonald's uh, and Trustee Buckland's concern, but I, I think we're, we have little choice in this matter at the present time from what I can see in that if we don't use the money, we're going to lose it. Um, the other th yeah, there are a few other points that I would like to uh, raise with regard to this matter. I think uh, as a board uh, and as a school in that area, we have to be uh, competitive. And the best area in which to be competitive is academic excellence. And we can only assume that our staff and um, teachers and EAs and everyone is working towards that. But in terms of facilities, we also have to be competitive. And uh, I think North Grenville is located in a, in a high area growth. And um, therefore, uh, I think we have a rather unique opportunity here for a partnership with uh, the municipality of North Grenville, I understand. Um, I think it's, it's a win-win situation. And uh, I'm notwithstanding the concerns raised, and I appreciate them. But in this case, I think we have to pursue And it was my understanding as well that this, this money is basically site specific based on the approval process from the ministry and we had to spend it on North, the new North Randall. Mr. <coughs> McDonald. I'm not certain. I heard some mixed messages about projects. I didn't realize it was site specific and even if it is site specific. The ministry is going to approve a million dollars for a track? Perhaps. <clears throat> they did. They did. Do you want to clarify that a little bit more for us? Well, there's a, there's a, a couple of things. I think the simplest way to put it is um, when we actually, uh, before <clears throat> tender, and as I said, I mentioned, I, I brought it to the board on the, the 16th of June in 2010 that we had a considerably good chance of having at least $800,000 left over and we're looking at formulating projects. It was crystal clear to me at that time that if we did not spend the money on North Grenville <coughs> and quickly after, during or at, shortly after the, pro the main project that, <coughs> excuse me, we would not have it. And in fact, um, Peter Bosch would recount to you a rather heated conversation I had with our ministry advisor about whether the board should be able to keep the money at all uh, and uh, any savings at all. So it was, from my perspective, it was crystal clear to me that it was um, definitely site specific. And if I didn't make that clear, I'm, I'm definitely sorry for that. Um, with respect to the Van Cleek Hill project, I think I would like to see us in a position to be able to actually build a complete facility whenever we build facilities and also flesh out the facilities that uh, we have in our roster that don't have those, those uh, kinds of amenities. 
Uh, with respect to Bankley Kill specifically, you recall our funding was around $10.8 million, uh, and we actually spent closer to $15 million on it. Uh, that being said, it was all pre approved by the ministry. We came in on budget, but the budget was already over our uh, allotted funding amount, so they wouldn't let us even entertain. Uh, I don't even think they let us entertain a new flag for that school uh, by the time we were all done. <coughs> and with respect to the track, um, the sad fact of the matter is these days um, that's just the going rate. So uh, when uh, you're looking at uh, the ministry staff looking at Toronto schools, uh, actually their reaction was that's all you're spending on the track um, because they're used to um, considerably more developed um, kind of amenities. Uh, and in fact, um, a third of the, uh, well, close to a half of the project is really the fencing of the site, which we had previously agreed to, and also uh, just clearing and grubbing the ground and, and preparing it. The actual uh, pavement of the track is not really, uh, is not, I, I could give you a breakdown on the project cost, but it's not, not that big an amount. So um, they actually, it was, it was a, quite an interesting conversation where they didn't really bat an eye. It seems to me that there's two two discussions. I mean, the first discussion is, was this site specific? If it is, then the money is tied and, and our hands are tied in terms of what we do. And of course, the second issue that was brought forward is, uh, you know, we were very fortunate to be in a position where we have excess money, but what do we do in the future uh, when we have excess money that's not site specific? And I think that's something we have to look at down the road. Uh, so it's a good point because there are certainly our needs elsewhere. Uh, but in this case, this money, uh, it's been clearly stated that it's site specific and uh, we're doing our best we, as we can to make this, this happen. And um, I'm certainly, I, I, I kind of side with uh, you know, Trustee Swan and, and, and Trustee Garrow. This is something we should be proud of that we come in. I know there was a lot of hard work to get here and I know um, um, former trustee um, Joan Hodge was part of that as well and now she was part of the beginning stages of this. And so there was a lot of people that put a lot of time and effort in to, to make this come off and, uh, and really a kudos to them. It's just that now it's put us in an awkward position where we have excess money. Uh, site specific, I think that case closed. Um, however, you certainly have brought forward good, good points in terms of what do we do in cases that are not site specific and we have money left over. Any, any other questions, comments? Just a, just a point of learning for us because I, I believe that uh, Trustee McDonald makes a very fair comment. Um, an autonomous board of ours that prides ourselves on doing the right things for kids and keeping kids first and centered, but we've had no problem telling the minister on times that we're not doing what you're doing, we're doing what we're doing. And we've led the, the way, not to say that, that we're just marching to the Mary V of uh, downtown Toronto. And what we have determined uh, at, this, at the senior table is that we're going to amend with your approval that if a project comes in above we will we will deal with it the exact same way as if a project was below because trustee mcdonald's absolutely correct when we are we're significantly above uh everyone shared in that difficulty and when we uh, come in in, a, in the last two particular projects in a positive mm -hmm. way uh and then this, mo this one most recently where we're going to tell the ministry we can do something in Eastern Ontario quite significant we'd like to be able to share that differently I think that the trustees should have the right to see that and we're going to amend that and bring it back here uh, whether uh, we, while we take the direction to do that we're going to do that as well thank you any further discussion questions okay thank you very much at this point I need a motion to move the regular meeting of public session of the community of the whole to be adjourned. Moved by Trustee Swan, seconded by Trustee McDonald. Those in favor, put your votes in. Can take a 10 minute recess, can we do that? Yeah. We'll go straight in. Pardon me? Okay. What I'd like to do is take a, a 10 minute recess and we will begin the, the board meeting. Let's, um, let's all be ready to go at 22. Okay. Thank you.
Now, who do we still have online? On the phones? Greg, are you there? Rusty Garrow, are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Chair Petersma? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, everyone's here. And um, Bill's coming in later. Okay. Thank you very much. We have a call to order for the board meeting, November 28th, public session. Uh, I need a motion that the Upper Canada District School Board suspend the rules requiring the, requiring the board meeting to begin at 8.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Partner, seconded by Trustee McDonald. Thank you very much. Um, conflict of interest declaration. Trustee McAllister and I okay in terms of the negotiations update. Thank you so much. Uh, just a point of order. You need to vote, don't you? We just did. We just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who is that man? Okay, we have uh, a report from the Committee of the Whole private session, November 14th. There was a motion that came out of that, that the Upper Canada District School Board approve recommendations uh, specified in the private, section, or private session, November 14th, 2012, pertaining to agenda item B4. Need a mover for that? It's time for a second. We need to approve. Move. Did I miss the agenda? Oh, I, my apologies. I go back one item. I'll come back to this one. Need a consent to approve or a consent agenda item approval. I need a motion to approve the agenda, approved by Trustee McAllister, or McDonald, seconded by Trustee McAllister. And let's vote. <laughs> Thank you very much. My apologies. Moving on to the action report. Again, we have a report from the Committee of the Whole Private Session, November 14th, 2012. The motion came out of that session. The Upper Canada District School Board approved the recommendations specified in private session on November 14th, 2012. Returning to an agenda item B4. Need a motion. A mover. <coughs> Moved by Trustee Swan, seconded by Trustee McDonald. Those in favor? And that passes. Thank you very much. Um, there is an, an item on the agenda. I'm just going to read this one. A report from the committee, the whole public session, November 14, 2012. There were four items discussed. No recommendations were brought forward. At this point, we're going to move on to the audit, the annual audit committee report to the board. I'm going to ask uh, Second Vice Chair Trustee McDonald to report on that, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, report before you um, <coughs> is a annual requirement of the ministry uh, audit committees are uh, um, re required <coughs> law to uh, for boards to have audit committees and one of those requirements is the audit committee report back to the board uh, on a minimum of an annual basis uh, information that has to be included within those reports is the members the attendance of those members um, and then the actions taken within the meetings you'll see that um, in the background area <coughs> Our membership included uh, myself, uh, Chair Petersma, for a period of time being replaced by Trustee McAllister, Trustee Anne McCray, uh, and our two lay appointments, Linda Harrison and Barry Curtis. The attendance is, uh, is adjacent to their names uh, on the right-hand side there. The meetings that we've, uh, we've had over the course of the year from uh, last December up until <coughs> November 13th are summarized below but I will go over just a couple of those points. Uh, December 5th meeting last year, 2011, um, we saw the introduction of what was considered uh, risk heat maps by the uh, regional audit manager. This is the internal audit function that uh, the ministry has, uh, uh, has created, which uh, looks after uh, all the boards within a certain jurisdiction, regional area. Uh, the risk heat maps were shared and discussed and it's it was intended to help uh, develop a five-year plan. 
um, for the internal audit function. <coughs> The uh, committee reviewed those um, those recommendations of, of Al Miller, and um, we basically started to look at the human resources and payroll uh, internal audit plans. That would be the first action that the uh, the audit um, uh, manager would undertake with his team, and um, he would was going to sit out and do that work in January and report back to uh, um, to the audit committee uh, once his findings were completed. In July, uh, we met to review the internal audit report on compensation, payroll benefits, and <coughs> timekeeping uh, as presented uh, by Al Miller. Uh, Mr. Miller did commend the staff in sharing their knowledge and assistance with the controls and process in place. Uh, there were no major findings noted in seven key areas audited and three identifying areas for improvements. And I would say that those areas of, uh, of improvement were noted um, and we had staff in attendance at that meeting from HR and finance uh, and um, those areas of improvement were reported on subsequently and um, certainly the actions that were required have been uh, undertaken by those departments. Um, the last sentences of that particular meeting is the most important I think that we <coughs> want to focus on. <coughs> the district school board has the had the least amount of areas for improvement in comparison to other boards across the sector. So when I said the regional area, other boards in our sector, this um, this deals with English public and English Catholic boards within this jurisdiction. So it would also include um, Eastern Ontario Catholic District School Board, the Ottawa Public, Ottawa Catholic, Renfrew Public, Renfrew Catholic. <coughs> I believe it also includes the uh, the limestone area. Is that correct? Yes, it does. The yes, limestone it does. area as well. So uh, uh, public and Catholic. So that, I think, statement goes a long way for this board. To say that um, we have uh, the least amount of areas of improvement, we, uh, you said we had three. Um, I think it's important to note that um, we are on good, as we know from last meeting, that we're on good financial ground based on our audit. But even in our day-to-day uh, -day activities, uh, we're on good solid ground based on the practices and policies and procedures that we have in place. <coughs> In October, we met again. Uh, this meeting was by uh, teleconference to uh, discuss the next area um, that we would be looking at for um, the regional audit uh, function to review. And uh, at that time, um, we looked at uh, where we selected the areas of accounts payable and procurement um, uh, as an area um, that are including the tendering process. Um, Expense reporting, purchasing cards appropriate. Um, we would basically look at those areas for uh, for the next uh, control um, process, and then within the year we would also look at en enrollment control process, fundraising control, audit process, and school audits, um, as well as sick leave usage, overtime cost. There's also going to be a, a follow-up report um, from the audit recommendations <coughs> related to the compensation, payroll benefits. Um, we, we also, I, I'm a little confused here, uh, Trustee Super, uh, or, uh, Superintendent Gales, if you can help me. We, we looked at one particular area that we were going to undertake and provide a report back to Al Miller um, with our own internal audit function, um, uh, Ms. Meyer. We would report to Al Miller and if that, uh, the criteria that was used, um, then he would not proceed to do those the, that area. Was that related? That was related to school fundraising. Was that correct? Uh, across the sector, one of the areas that he will be looking at, and in fact <coughs> across the province, is school fundraising. As we have our own internal auditor who has done extensive work in that area, his review was to review her work to see if there were any areas missing. Um, he will not, unless there are areas missing in her work, he wouldn't go into schools to redo that work. He would move on to other areas and we had provided, or pardon me, the audit committee had provided um, some suggestions of, of further areas to, uh, to review when um, we get our allocation of his time. So just based on that, <coughs> we, as you know, um, we do have our own internal audit person that uh, undertakes, uh, I guess, a, 
a review of different areas that um, that is, uh, are seen fit by this board. There's been extensive work done around school um, fundraising, school um, um, expenses, and um, I think it's worthwhile to mention that because of that work, uh, mostly because our large part of that work um, that we had a few recommendations as well that the internal audit team, regional auditor. Uh, Al Miller um, was satisfied or would be satisfied that, um, that what we're actually doing as a board with our own employee um, is satisfactory in meeting the needs uh, more so than many other boards. Um, pretty sure that there are no other boards that have that function uh, within his jurisdiction. The only board that becomes even close is Ottawa Public does have um, staff to hire people to come in and, and review school fundraising uh, accounts. External. Though. External. Yeah. Um, our next meeting then was uh, on November 13th, where we were, um, our main purpose of the meeting was to review the audited financial statements and the audit uh, findings report <coughs> presented by KPMG, Barry Lalon, and, um, and his representative. Um, so we reviewed that. Presented that uh, the financial statements to you at our last um, committee, the whole board meeting, uh, and I demonstrated that um, <coughs> we are in compliance and that we would um, had an accumulated um, deficit of about uh, 23 million, I think it was, um, in a situation that we were in based on approved funding that we have and uh, approved expenses. That uh, is the uh, is the report, uh, uh, trustees. If you have any questions for me or anyone else in the committee or Superintendent Gales, please feel free. Thank you very much, Trustee Cartner. Question to Vice Chair McDonald: When you say here in the August October meeting where you asked that enrollment control process, fundraising control audit process, and school audits would be reviewed. With sick leave usage and overtime <coughs> to follow. Is there any way we can get an interim report on the use of sick leave, the usage of or non usage of, and overtime costs partway through the year as opposed to waiting until August 31st of next year? Uh, and the purpose I'm asking that question is because of the labor, because of Bill 115 and what has, it is imposing on boards now. Just to see a comparison of what's gone on in the past as compared to what's happening this year in usage. I think that's a fair uh, question, but it, it may be outside the scope of the audit committee. The audit committee would review to ensure that the processes used are following um, our policies and following legislation. Okay. It, we, we don't actually look at the dollar amounts uh, per se. Um, so it, we would review to make sure that it's spent according to what is required by our own policies or legislation. Um, we could, outside of the audit committee, they'll request, in my view, request that, that information. Though. I'm not quite certain that it would be an audit committee. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if that ma material is important, then you, you ask for it, and we can have it. In fact, we're watching it very closely right now. You may want to re refer to Charlotte. Yep. Trustee Patterson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, through you, <coughs> we in previous years have uh, provided the board uh, through our school board cooperative, uh, which uh, supports a number of boards in the province, uh, data regarding uh, sick leave utilization uh, for all employee groups. We do this on an annual basis. Uh, we've provided that to the board in the past. Um, now, uh, of particular import this year, uh, uh, this year as the first year of uh, the implementation of Bill 115, uh, there is a difference in the um, uh, allocation of sick leave uh, that each employee is entitled to. Uh, and as uh, Director Thomas said, we are uh, monitoring that uh, quite closely and uh, would certainly be able to uh, provide uh, an accounting uh, of that at some point in time during the year. Any other questions, comments? Okay, before we um, vote, oh, Trustee Buckland. Yes, I just wanted to ask uh, through you, uh, 
the three words that came up, one was uh, this regional auditor, another was sector, another was jurisdiction. And uh, are these synonyms is my question, because uh, I'm fearful of another amalgamation where I might have to drive to Oshawa or North Bay. Uh, so are these synonyms? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, they are. Um, the regional audit function is, is to look after the, those particular areas. When I refer to jurisdiction, um, I, I intended to mean the, uh, the area that's responsible, or Mr. Miller is responsible for. And so those boards you mentioned uh, are his regional responsibility. That's right. Thank you. Further questions, comments? Before we go to motion, I, I personally, on behalf of the board, want to thank Linda Harrison and Barry Curtis for their time and effort in the audit mini. And face to face, <coughs> I want to uh, thank our, uh, Trustee McDonald, Trustee McAllister, Trustee McRae, and uh, Chair Peters. Well, you were there for some of that, so thank you very much. When you look at the number of meetings that were involved in the, the work, it certainly is, is credible, and thank you so much for, for what you have done. Just, uh, could I make another point? It, just, uh, <coughs> it seemed as though it was an overlap and something extraneous to have this imposed on us. <coughs> I was wondering if the chair would make a value comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Come out number one. Well, yeah, I'm, previous word. I'm not sure about a value comment, but um, certainly we, as a committee, we raise these concerns in, in Trustee McRae and and uh, Chair Petersma um, <coughs> was there at the beginning when we were first had <coughs> discussions with, uh, with Al Miller. Um, I think the the understanding or the um, the belief from the ministry was that things were going to be in worse shape than they are. Um, the the heat maps. In order to generate the heat maps, there were nine thousand questions um, asked of our staff, and there were repeat questions but in different uh, different areas um, financial areas within the board so our staff and other boards as well but our staff had to go through and respond to 9,000 questions to be able to generate a heat map and then when we saw the heat map there was no heat there was a little bit of you know amber but not not uh, a barn burning down by any means and so I think the regional auditor had some difficulty in trying to determine where he would he would um, start to look. The intention was the heat map would identify those areas that they would look at for an audit. Um, but I think the areas that they that they chose originally in consultation with us, and then the subsequent areas are valid. Um, uh, it's a um, it is an overlap, absolutely, based on what we do with our own internal function. It's a requirement of the ministry, and um, you know, it, it does catch a few things. I mean, we have some three areas for improvement, and I think any time that we can look at areas of improvement, there's uh, there's an opportunity there for uh, for us to uh, um, to build on that and um, be even better. So, it, as much as it is uh, an overlap, it uh, it still is uh, I think useful at this point. Thank you, Director. Yeah. From my perspective, it, it certainly was an overlap. Uh, I would like to just say a few words is that $5 million went towards that in Ottawa in an office. And KPMG comes in there and sits down there every year. They ask us 9,000 questions and put our staff through hoops that are unbelievable. And then they bring a leather layer on top to come and ask 9,000 more questions of our staff. And I want you to know, I know, I know David, you stuck up for this. But it was a layer of the cake that was, was a little difficult to it. And what it came back to was Barry well, uh, sat down there two years ago and said, you guys can account for almost every hot dog, just jokingly. <coughs> and to me, when a, 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 the parents and families of Eastern Ontario can say their Board of Education takes deep, deep respect <coughs> of their money and their tax dollars, says something about this board. And I'd also like to, to graciously thank Rick, who knew how I was <coughs> feeling about this, kept the thing on the proper uh, and went the right way. <coughs> the fact was, again, it came back and said, there's a board, we're physically well-managed and we're physically responsible for what's happening. Uh, that's good, but I'm not so sure we had to, as a group of taxpayers, to pay $5 million for that. I know I'm not the politician, but I know this, that uh, that $5 million might have been spent differently 
uh, by someone in another place. Thank you. Thank you for, for all your work. Thank you. Further comments? Questions? Okay. I have a motion that the Upper Canada District School Board adopt the report and thank the Audit Committee for their work. Moved by Trustee McDonald, seconded by Trustee McAllister. And I'll ask you to vote. And that's passed. Thank you so much. Chair Petersma, do we have you on the phone? Yep, I'm here. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next action item is request to amend the board bylaws, and I'm going to ask you to take that over if you don't mind. Sure, I'll do the best that I can. Um, sure, you will. I apologize that uh, I don't have very, a good internet connection, so not able to see all the relevant documents. However, <coughs> um, a number of you will remember we made some changes to uh, the way we organized our meetings to structure two meetings. And uh, as we've done in the past, whenever we need to, we uh, review our bylaws and try to make them work uh, for us rather than us working to the bylaws. Uh, so as we uh, worked through them, we discovered that there perhaps was a refinement to the way that we had laid out the meetings. And rather than trying to structure two meetings in one night, we would organize one meeting and contain the committee of the whole and if need be, go into private session as required. Um, <coughs> this was in fact um, Superintendent of Business Rick Gale's uh, suggestion. And uh, I mention that because it's always great when he, he uh, gives us a suggestion that we can actually use. So <laughs> I appreciate, we appreciate that. Uh, so we have before you a number of changes that would allow us to do that. Um, it eliminates the separation of committee of the whole from uh, board um, and places it inside. You'll see it as one of the agenda items uh, in the list of agendas. Um, we also discovered that we had created the, the problem that uh, a trustee by missing one and a half meetings could essentially uh, uh, be uh, disqualified um, under the attendance rules um, as we didn't make a change to the attendance requirements when we made the change to the way we had structured the meeting. So we've also gone in and cleaned that up so that it uh, closer resembles our expectation that uh, three consecutive meetings. Uh, in part, that, that, is, that is fixed by uh, reducing uh, the number of meetings that we would have, as in the case tonight, from two to one. Uh, but we've also removed the language of uh, Committee of the Whole as an attendance requirement. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions, comments for Chair Peterson? Seems to me that everyone is pretty happy with this right now. Justice Swan, do you have a question? No? Any further, further comments you want to make, Chair Peterson, on this? There's, there's no questions or comments coming from the board? No, I think it's it's uh, one of the things that I think that we've uh, moved to is is as I said off the top, looking at our bylaws is working for us. So, you know, we'll we'll uh, work on this and and see how well it reflects the way we wanted to do business. And if required, we'll come back with more changes. But I think we've finally got the structure to the point where I think it's uh, what we all expected. Well, thank you so much for your work on this, and thank you, Superintendent Gales, for uh, impressing our chair. Uh, I also, uh, uh, Lisa Raymond uh, did a, f uh, a fair amount of work in uh, prepping this as well. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay, if there are no further questions or comments, I have a motion that the Upper Canada District School Board approve the revised board bylaws effective November 28, 2012. Moved by Trustee Karkner, oh. seconded by Trustee McRae. And I'll ask you to vote. And that, Trustee Buckman. I haven't found it yet, but I'm in favor of it. Okay, and that, 
passes. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to the next item, which is negotiation update. And thank you, Trustee McAllister. And I'm going to turn this over to Superintendent, who I think before I'm not sure if I promoted you or demoted you, I called you Trustee. <laughs> Superintendent Patterson. <laughs> Chair McMillan, uh, there was a report provided to you in your package uh, regarding the status of negotiations uh, as of last week. Uh, tonight I would just like to update you on a few matters uh, uh, as it relates to recent developments over the last uh, two days. Um, but I think at the outset I would just like to emphasize that uh, the board, uh, that we continue uh, to negotiate collective agreements with our union groups and we look forward to arriving at fair agreements that support student learning. And that being said, um, last night uh, we uh, suspended negotiations um, uh, with OSSTF. We had met with them uh, throughout the day and into the evening. Uh, and at about 8.30 we received an email um, from um, OSSTF indicating that they had been directed to uh, suspend negotiations throughout the province. Um, the term that they use is to stand down. So uh, last night they stood down uh, at about 8.30. Uh, now, uh, the impact of that locally, uh, of course, as it relates to negotiations, um, our professional support services personnel, PSSP, they are also uh, uh, under the OSSTF umbrella as are our secondary occasional teachers. So in as much as, that, uh, in as, much as we had identified dates uh, in the report, all of those dates uh, have been withdrawn at this point in time. Uh, and we await further communication from the secondary union uh, as we uh, look forward to uh, beginning or starting the bargaining process again with them. Uh, so as it relates to the school, as we understand it, in our secondary schools, the sanctions continue. Uh, we've not received any other communication uh, that would indicate uh, anything different than what we currently know in our secondary schools. Uh, on the elementary side, uh, we met with the Ministry of Labour conciliator uh, last week, uh, at which time uh, the union requested a no board report. Uh, this means that <coughs> the uh, conciliator uh, considers the request and goes away and <coughs> thinks about that for a few days and then uh, if he decides or she decides that there's it's an appropriate uh, request um, the conciliator writes a letter uh, to the board and to the unions and 17 days after the date indicated on the letter uh, we would uh, be in the position uh, for uh, union strike or uh, lockout uh, by the board uh, keeping in mind that uh, it has been our experience uh, that strike usually starts with the kinds of sanctions that you that we are currently seeing uh, in the secondary panel. Uh, challenging for sure, uh, but uh, not a full withdrawal of services uh, to begin with. Uh, again, that being said, um, Director of Communications Terry Simser has sent you this evening, I believe, a link. Uh, to ETFO and OSSTF websites, and the ETFO uh, website indicates that uh, there is intention uh, that when sanctions occur in boards, and I assume ours would be one of them, uh, that uh, they would provide us with 72 hours notice, and then uh, there would be full withdrawal of services for a day. So um, that's just new today, and so we're just digesting that now as we speak, but obviously uh, uh, our concern for our students and student learning would be uh, uh, would be uh, at the forefront there. Uh, and lastly, uh, we continue to meet uh, with CUPE, and uh, as you know, uh, our CUPE union uh, supports. Uh, work, uh, well, the membership of CUPE is all of our support staff, our EAs, our custodians, uh, and many other uh, office administrators and many other roles uh, in our in our. Uh, in our school system. Uh, we have some dates we have met recently and again further dates are scheduled. So uh, that's the report and I would be glad to uh, take any questions. Thank you very much Superintendent Patterson. Questions? Comments? No comments? No questions? Thank you so much for that report. I appreciate that. 
we can ask uh, Trustee McAllister to come on back in. Principal and the place stepping in, I suppose, to give supervision when necessary. Thank you, Trustee McAllister. I'm going to ask Trustee Richards if she will give us a report from the Special Education Advisory Committee. Thank you. Yes. The Special Education Advisory Committee met here um, in this room on Tuesday, November 6th. We had a presentation uh, from Elizabeth Harrison, who's the Manager, Client Services, Mental Health and Addictions, and Lori Karkner, RN for the Southeast Community Care Access Center. Um, they were giving us a presentation on an overview of the Mental Health and Addiction Nursing Initiative that is funded by the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to address the needs of students with mental health and addictions. Uh, Lori Karkner, RN, uh, she's, going to, she's the person that's been hired to work in partnership with the Upper Canada District School Board staff. Her role will complement, not duplicate the board staff roles and the support will be provided in three key areas fast access to high quality services, early identification and, and intervention, and supporting children with unique needs. It's still very much uh, in progress. They're kind of feeling out their way because it's a very new role for them. And then we had our superintendent's report and Victoria Hemmings reported um, that the board had received, or not the board, that the um, special education review had been completed and that SEAC would receive that document at some time. Our next meeting is next Tuesday here at the board office. Everyone's welcome to come. It starts at 6.30. like to see you here. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Trustee Richards? Thank you so much. I'm going to move on to the next item. I'm going to ask the uh, OPSFA director, David McDonald, to give us an OPSFA report. Uh, thank you very much. Very brief uh, report uh, for you this evening. Uh, the next board of directors <coughs> meeting is actually this coming weekend. Um, I'm unable to attend, but Trustee Buckland will be uh, representing me as an alter alternate. I believe Trustee Garrow will be there as the uh, uh, First Nations representative as well. Uh, just wanted to point out too that the fast reports that OPSPA sends out on a um, bi-weekly basis. Um, Trustee Art Buckland was mentioned in fast reports um, as a result of the, the, I don't know if we want to say honor or roasting or ribbing or... Uh, it was a roasting. <laughs> whatever, whatever it was that particular night uh, and for his years of service um, to public education. Uh, one thing that I did put in with, uh, within this report um, I've just uh, labeled it as uh, information from ministry and I'll uh, uh, intend to include this on a regular basis. Uh, the ministry provides B uh, memos and uh, SB memos. Uh, the B memos relate to policy and financial matters and the SB memos are more administrative information uh, or clarification issues uh, around the financial matters. I provided the link um, within this report to the, uh, the ministry's website where you can see the B and SB memos. There's nothing new since October, but I will provide you with updates as to what the memos are. It's, it's good information. OPSPA sends them out to, uh, to us, and we get that as part of our board of directors package on a, on a regular basis. Um, OPSPA did have the uh, working groups of OPSPA have met uh, since our last board of directors meeting, and I'll certainly uh, open the floor to allow the uh, members of those committees to, uh, uh, to offer some comment. Uh, dates to remember this coming weekend, uh, board of Directors meeting and also in January, the Public Education Symposium um, in Toronto, February, sorry, January 31st, February 2nd. I'll open the floor then, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, to uh, uh, my colleagues who may uh, uh, sit on the uh, various committees of Oxford. Certainly. Do we have any, any uh, additional comments that are going to be made by those, those folks? Mr. McAllister. Just one item with regard to the uh, full day kindergarten and child care. It was announced, um, it, re it was reported today uh, by OPSPAS via, um, I can't think of the name, it was York University, I believe. Uh, anyway, it was a substantial uh, announcement uh, whereby uh, the $113 million that is being spent over three years to, retro to retrofit uh, early years classroom. And uh, he, 
this person supported this as, a, as an economic driver for the province. And what they were saying really is that full day kindergarten is uh, is working, mm -hmm. working well. Thank you. Uh, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, the senior vice president. Right. Bank of Nova Scotia. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get that name down. Uh, spoke about uh, early childhood education as a economic engine for Canada, yeah, and particularly what we're trying to do in Ontario. I read the same report. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? I, I've said this before. I mean, when we have so many, so many of our trustees that are involved in OSPA, and, and it, what it does is just enriches the knowledge base of our board. I've said it before, and I say it again. I thank you so much for all of you and the involvement that you have. It certainly makes us a much better board. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much, Director McDonald. Moving on to the student trustee report, I'll ask <coughs> student trustee Sydney Collard if she'll give a report. Thank you, Chair. Um, November has been a confusing month for students. Uh, I have some uh, concerning points and some good points. Uh, concerning points, the link crew uh, is going very well in most schools. In some of the first year schools, they're noticing a type of um, hump in the uh, link leader participation, uh, but we are working through it, getting information from other school boards and from second year schools uh, within our school board, and uh, we're currently working through it and uh, getting it uh, dealt with. Um, I also wanted to um, point out. Oh, that was my only bad point, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, students uh, are using the student trustee role, uh, uh, as in um, they're contacting me from uh, many different <coughs> schools, saying that they uh, love how our school board is dealing with the teacher job action. Um, situation. The students have no worries or concerns for their own personal education. Graduating students um, know that they will be fine, they're, they're safe. Uh, they're noticing that their principals and vice principals are doing a great job in stepping up uh, for uh, like uh, in supervision. supervision and stuff like that. Uh, student council meetings, sports and prom community meetings are still being held, uh, running smoothly in all the schools uh, that I have talked to you. I have not had a school um, say anything negative that's happening. Um, what else? Um, our next student senate meeting is on December 14th. Uh, we still have some room to schedule. If uh, anyone would like to stop by, we would love to have you there. Uh, we will also be coming out with a student senator logo, so that's exciting. I recently visited Tagua Secondary School. As I mentioned before, I uh, wanted to make it a goal to visit all of our secondary schools or in our high schools. Um, and as a last point, uh, public <coughs> uh, board council of uh, Ontario Student, Su Student Trustee Association, we have a uh, conference call on Sunday at 7 o'clock and uh, we're doing regular calls every Sunday uh, to uh, so that all the um, student trustees from the Public Board Council of Ontario can talk and discuss what's happening in their boards. And that is my report. Thank you, student <coughs> trustee Collard. And any questions or comments? It looks like on December 15th, I'm going to have to kind of brush up a speech, huh? 14th. Friday. Okay, I guess I'll be there on the 14th, too. Oh, I, I, I look forward to that. I, I love being in the student center with those kids. They're, uh, I say the word kids, with those student leaders. They are just amazing people. So I, I do look forward to the opportunity to get there again. Uh, is, is, there a, is this a special one? Is a dress? What's, what's our dress for this one? Yeah, it's a country day theme. All right, yeehaw. So it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Thank you so much. Brings us to some remarks. I'm going to ask the director if he has any remarks. I'm going to, as the chair, I get to have the last word. I'd just like to uh, thank and pray for uh, doing a very special thing up there at Almont. It was uh, a fabulous afternoon. I know there was an Alpha sighting. 
<laughs> and uh, he got a town real fast after that. But, uh, over six thousand dollars was raised in the afternoon for champions, and uh, I think the community just thinks it's fabulous what you've done. Uh, they're just wondering uh, you know, how fast you work on that uh, computer of yours. Because it seemed like everyone had received fifteen emails from you that day. Could you respond? <laughs> Maybe sixteen. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, just a reminder to all the trustees that th at the uh, conclusion of these meetings, we're not having kind of special reports in terms of what's happening in your school areas. Just a reminder to get here early. I believe it's five o'clock that we can see Allison Grange and get a, a kind of a five five thirty. If you get here and you've got some good news stories you want to uh, have videotaped, uh, Allison will do her very best to make you look good and sound good. Um, she's working on me right now.